One of the greatest benefits, and there are many benefits, and I, I, I really paused in saying great benefits, but this is really a great benefit of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our trust in God, is this calm assurance that he is the Lord, my keeper, that he keeps us. You need to know this, that the Lord is able to keep you. Most believers, and I hope and pray every one of you are, most believers have some kind of testimony of God's keeping power. Everybody that has a testimony of that, slip your hand up. Has the Lord ever kept you through something? He's good at that. I cannot tell you the numbers of times that we have been kept through disasters. Uh, I was thinking the other day, uh, we were having a storm and a bolt of lightning hit the tree behind our house, went through the cable system into our house, burned a hole about that big inside of our house, knocked out all of our electrical stuff, our TV, our all kinds of wonderful things, went through the house and went all the way to a telephone pole on the other side of our house. We were thankful that the Lord was our keeper because it could have burned the house down. You know, you just never know the things that God has done for you. And it's good for us to pay attention when God has kept us through disasters and through attacks of the enemy. We need to really remember all of the times that the Lord has rescued us from disasters. He's, he, the scripture says he set my feet on a rock and he established my way or my going. So I, I can, I can relate to that numbers of times he picked me up from the miry clay and he set me on a solid rock and he said you're safe and secure here he is keeping my soul Jesus was praying for his disciples and he asked the father in heaven to keep them I want to broaden that because I believe that he, he definitely prayed for his disciples. But I, I believe that the Lord had you and me in mind when he was praying. I think I have evidence of that and I'll present it in a minute. John 17 and verse 11. Jesus says, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you. So Jesus is preparing for his crucifixion. He says, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me that they may be one as we are one. You are kept through the Father's name. Have you ever considered that? That you are kept through the Father's name? Most of the time in our relationship with God, we think about the name of Jesus. But here Jesus says, Father, keep them through your name. You have a relationship with the name of God Almighty. God is keeping you. Can you consider this morning the power of the name of God? I know there's power in the name of Jesus, and we, we've been uh, encouraged many times to use the name of Jesus, to stand in the name of Jesus. But here Jesus says, Father, keep them through your name. Hallelujah. So Jesus prayed that all of those that the Father has given him. You know, I believe that I have been given to Jesus Christ. And Jesus is praying that all of those that you have given me would be kept by your name. Hallelujah. That's good news. Verse 12. He says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. This is a powerful confession by Jesus Christ. None of them is lost. I have been able to keep every one that you have given me. I want to tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ is able to keep those that have been committed to him. Could I tell you that personally? The Lord is able to keep you. He's able to keep you from the attack of the enemy. 
He's able to keep you from the everything that the devil has planned against you. Verse 13. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world, we are kept from the world. That's good news. How many of you have had any impact in your life from the world? Do you know what the world means? The world means the system. It means the attitude. It means the dominion of Satan. It means a lot of things. It means the kingdom of, of evil. We have been kept from the world. There is a sanctifying power there that is uh, given to each and every one. The next two verses help us with this. It says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. I pray this every day. I try to remember to pray it every day. I might miss once in a while. I pray, Lord, keep us from the devil. Keep us from the attacks of the enemy. I think it's necessary for us to pray in agreement to what Jesus has prayed. And he's praying, Father, keep them from the evil one. I want to tell you this morning that the Lord is interested in keeping you from the attacks of the enemy. How many of you have recognized the attack of the enemy? So when Satan comes in, you need to hear this, that Jesus Christ has asked the Father to keep you from Satan's attack. Stop magnifying the attack of the enemy and start saying the Lord has prayed and is able to keep me. I believe that God is able to keep you safe. So he not only set us apart from the world, he's given us this word that just as he is not of the world, he set us apart so that we are not of the world. You're different. Hallelujah. Verse number 17, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified. The word sanctified means set apart. We're set apart. Jesus was set apart for a certain mission but then also Jesus said as I have been set apart, as I have been sanctified by the Father, as I have had a particular mission mission and ministry, as I have remained away from sin, as I have remained out of the control of the devil, I pray the, the Lord would also keep you sanctified, set apart from the world and given life through Jesus Christ. He says this, this word, and I think it's a very important word for us. There in verse 19, it says, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. He's given us his word. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Verse number 20. I do not pray for these alone. This is why I said that it's not just for the 12. It's for every one of us. But also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they all may be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. This is an amazing thing. Jesus is praying that you may be one, unified, unity, and that they may be one, that you may be one with God. This is a, an amazing doctrinal idea. Jesus is speaking a truth to you that you can be united with God the Father, that you can be united with, knit together in love, that we may be one with one another and then also in the same sense, one with God. 
You know, in this world, uh, there's a difference in the world than what we have. In the world, there are so many things that, that make us separate. Do you know that? We live in our own homes. I'm sort of happy about that. <laughs> you know, I love all of you, but... <clears throat> It's nice to have our own place, isn't it? That sort of separates us. We have communities. We have different cities. But then there's all of the racial and the social and the economic things. I, I, I have, I, I wouldn't call it a privilege. I have had the experience of, of people saying, well, you're not, you don't really belong. Have you ever had anyone Indicate, well, you really do not have anything to do with us because we are above you or we're different than you. In Jesus Christ, there is something different because every one of us are knit together through the love that God has for us. And then not only are we knit together, we're united with God the Father. This is good news. Really it is because in Jesus Christ there is not Jew and Greek, there is not bond and free, there is not, there is not all of these things. The walls of perdition that have divided us have been broken down, but there's another message in this that I think is just as great, and maybe I think even greater, is that the veil that has separated mankind from God Almighty has been broken in Jesus Christ and we have been brought into a unity into the Father through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In talking about our connection with the Father and with the Son, you see, the Lord has kept us for glory. I... I have intentionally chosen some songs this morning. Oh, the glory of your presence. God is glorious. Come into us, almighty God, and show and reveal your glory. You know, it, it, there is this keeping power, that this manifestation of God that sets us apart from the world. And it, it, it's is a testimony that God says, I have claimed you and I, I will keep you. You are my people. That's a good, a good word for every one of us. God's keeping powers really demonstrated throughout the Bible. I want to show you just a very small amount of these testimonies. We need to keep this confession. And I'd like for you to say it out loud with me. The Lord is my keeper. Say it again. The Lord is my keeper. One more time. The Lord is my keeper. When you're going through this at night and you're uh, upset or disturbed or attacked, you need to say it again. The Lord is my keeper. It's a good confession to even make toward the adversary of your soul. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is keeping my soul. The Lord is protecting me. The Lord is my shield. Second Kings gives an amazing illustration of what it means to be kept by the power of God. Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, had declared war on Israel. And he marched against them with a great host, a great army, a large number of enemies. The, the numbers were so large that they were able to surround the city. Can you imagine right now how many people it would take to surround Las Cruces? Let's give them even 10 feet in between. It would still take a host, a large, a great army to do this. While they were there, Benedict every, every evening had a, a meeting with all of his generals and making plans for the next day's worth of attack. And every evening when he would meet, uh, they would say, well, this is where we're going to, we're going to center our attack in this place tomorrow, or this is what we're going to do. And he became very frustrated because every time they made a plan, 
God knew what was going on. So since God knew, God spoke to his, his man, Elisha, and told him what was going on. Benadad thought he had a traitor in the camp. And he became extremely mad and frustrated that somebody here is telling the people of Israel what we're going to do because every time we set up to attack in this place, they're all there. And every time we plan to do that, they're there. Something's rotten in our camp. You see, the Lord is our keeper. Second Kings 6 and verse 12. One of his servants said, None, my Lord, no one here is, is telling on you. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. Those of you that are in Wednesday night Bible study, you will remember this verse of scripture. Jesus said, I'm going to send you another comforter. And when he comes, he will tell you the things that are yet to come. This is exactly what the Holy Spirit is doing to Elijah. He's telling him, tomorrow, Benadad's going to show up there. And so they were able to be prepared. I want to tell you, the Lord is your keeper. And it doesn't matter how many the enemy sins against you, the Lord knows how to keep you. So it really upset Benadad when he heard this word. And so he sent out all of this. He sent out a large troop of people to go out against Elijah and capture him and get rid of him so that Israel would not hear this word from God. So they came and early in the morning, uh, Elisha's servant went out and he saw this great host of enemy that was all around the camp around his house. He was terrified in his heart. You know, sometimes in our heart, when we begin to see the things that the enemy has devised against us, we become fearful and terrified. What are we going to do? What if this is worse than we thought it was going to be? What if we don't survive? What, what if I'm left alone? Oh, on and on and on we go. Terrified, he said, at last, Master, I can hear the panic in his heart. At last, Master, what shall we do? We're surrounded. You know, sometimes we feel surrounded by the things that the adversary and our own health and our own finances and the world itself is against us. Have you ever felt that way? How are we going to survive this? Verse 16. So he answered, Elisha answered, Do not fear for those who are with us are more than those that are with them. You know, that's a good word. I like to know that there's more with us than more with them, but I would like to see them. <laughs> and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. I, I'm going to pray that right now. God, open our eyes that we can see that you're greater than our troubles. Yeah. Open our eyes that we can see that you have more for us than what is against us. Hallelujah. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Elisha stood calm with calm assurance. He knew for sure that the Lord of hosts was on his side and that even in the midst of the crisis that God was with him. Yeah. David had this same assurance and David kept saying in Psalms 3 and 6, he said, I'm not afraid of 10,000 enemies who surround me on every side. How can you not be afraid when there are 10,000 uh, that are against you? He says in chapter 27 and verse 3, Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. How can you do that? I trust in God. He is my keeper. Yeah. Psalms 55 and verse 18. He says, He ransoms me and keeps me safe from the battle 
waged against me, though many still oppose me. I want to tell you, the Lord God Almighty is greater than the enemy who comes against you. I want to pray it again. Lord, open our eyes that we may see and behold that the mountains around us are filled with the armies of the Lord. The Lord of hosts is with us and he's fighting with us and all of the angels of the Lord are camped around about us. God has horses and chariots of fire and they are kept around about us. You just don't see what it is the Lord has prepared to fight for you, with you, against the enemy that is coming against you. I thought it was interesting, so I did a little bit of research. From Samuel, the book of Samuel through Malachi, the Lord of hosts is mentioned 273 times. Think about that. Our God is the Lord of hosts. In Samuel chapter 5, 2 Samuel 5 and verse 10, David grew greater and greater for the Lord of hosts was with him. I want to tell you that this morning. The Lord of hosts is with you. Would you make that confession in your heart right now? The Lord of hosts is with me. The Lord of hosts is with me. I do not have to be afraid. I do not have to be fearful. The Lord of hosts is with me. In Psalms 46 and verse 7, he said, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In Psalms 89 and verse 8, he says, O Lord, God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord, your faithfulness also surrounds you. Psalms 88 and verse 8, he says, Lord of hosts, hear my prayer. In Psalms 24 and 10, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. The original word host is Saba, and it means an organized army, a host of angels ready and posed for battle. God has an organized. They're not just running here and there. They are organized by the Lord. The Lord of hosts has organized tens of thousands of angels that are around and about his people protecting us. You need to know that. They are, they're not puny little cherub with a little arrow. They are mighty they are mighty angels of God and they have chariots of fire and horses and they are ready to come at your disposal. The Lord Almighty, He is in control of them and He knows where to dispense them at the right time so that the enemy, when He has plotted against you, He will never be successful. He will always fail. Elisha knew that the Lord of hosts was fighting with him. The Lord of hosts was coming to his assistance. The angels of the Lord were encamping around and about. But here's the problem. His servant was just like many of us. We're blind. We're walking by faith. We don't have a clue what God is really doing. You need to know this this morning that the Lord God Almighty really knows what he's doing. And he has, I, I've, I've asked sometime, Lord, would you just show us the angels that are around us? I, I have had a few angelic visitations that I knew they were angels that had come. And I'll tell you one thing for certain. When an angel of the Lord comes to your aid, you will recognize how powerful they are. They are greater than any demon you will face. They are greater than sickness. They are greater than the things that, that Satan will bring against you to attack you. Elisha knew, I may be attacked by this great army, but my God is greater than this and he's coming to my aid. On another occasion, the Assyrian army came against King, the King Hezekiah of Judah. The king was unmoved, even though there was a strong enemy that had surrounded him. Second Chronicles 32 and verse 7. He was telling his people, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed 
before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him. For there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us, with us, is the Lord our God. The Lord your God is with you to help you and to fight your battles. You don't have to fight these things alone. The Lord will fight with you. He knows how to bring victory. He is the Lord of hosts. In Psalm 68 and verse 17 from the Amplified, it says, The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands upon thousands. I don't think he's really trying to number them. He's just giving us a clue that there's more of them than what you need. Can you imagine? Can you get it through your mind that around your house are thousands of of angels. You see, the Lord of hosts is prepared for whatever may happen. It may take you by surprise that Syria shows up on your doorstep or or the devil may show up on your doorstep or something tragic may may be assigned to your life by the enemy. But the Lord, your God, is prepared. He already knows what is coming. The Lord of hosts is prepared to help you in your time of trouble. In Psalms 121 and verse 5, it says, The Lord is your keeper. 1 Peter 1 and 5 says, We are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I want you to listen to what Jesus said in John 17 and 12. He says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none is lost. They were kept by his mighty power that was working on the outside of them. You know, sometimes I feel the power and the presence of God on the inside. That's good. But it's good to know there's something working on the outside. When you don't even feel it, when you don't recognize that it's working, the Lord is working. Hallelujah. You cannot make it. I'm going to be very blunt. With the things that are coming, With the things that are going to attack you, you're not going to make it all by yourself. You're going to have to have the Lord's help. The Lord has promised that he would be there. In in John 17 and 15, Jesus prayed that the Father would keep us from the evil one. In 1 Peter 1 and 5, we are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. The English word for kept means to retain possession of. Have you ever kept anything to take into one's charge? In other words, it's mine. To provide all of the necessities. So when I'm kept, I am not just sheltered, but I am provided for. To raise and to feed, we're kept. To protect and preserve. To have control. That's the English definition. The Greek definition of kept comes from the word phroreo, and it means to establish a military outpost. It's a little broader, isn't it? To guard, to hem in, to protect with a garrison, to establish a fortress with a fully equipped military to discern the enemy far in advance and to protect from danger. So the Lord has promised, I will keep you. So I'm going to establish this shield of protection around you. Not only is the Lord a strong tower and a defense for us, he has established a military outpost around you. That's pretty big. So the angel of the Lord encamps around about you. Think what it must look like if your eyes could be open. 
you wouldn't just see a couple of angels. You would see a wall of defense that the Lord has established. You're kept. He has, he has established a military outpost around you so that the things that you are needing to fight the battles that you are going to be in, that you are in, the Lord has already established around you the things that are going to be needed. I, I like to combine the English definition and the Greek definition together because I see in this exactly what the Lord does. I'm not just isolated over here. The Lord has provided everything that I'm going to need in this place that he is keeping us. Amen. John 17 and verse 15. Jesus prayed to the Father, keep them from the evil one. The Greek word here is tereo, and it means to carefully watch, preserve, guard, and hold fast. So here's what God is doing. I want you to get the image of this. God has put a garrison around you, and God is watching. The Almighty God has his eye on you. God is watching you. If God Almighty is watching you, there is no reason for you to be afraid when the enemy comes in. There is no reason for you to be intimidated and scared because the Lord, your God, is going to protect you. He's going to stay with you. He is able to keep you. I think we need to put all of this together. He is to me the Lord, my keeper. He has established his military outpost around us. He is fully equipped with all of the spiritual and physical things that I am going to need so that I am taken care of. We are always because of him. We are ready to face whatever it is may come against us because the Lord our God is on our side. I want you to consider the amount of help that we are given. John, 1 John 4 and 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Psalms 18 and 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. He promises that he will keep you in Psalm 61 and verse 3. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. Chapter 18 and verse 17. He delivered me from the strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. But the Lord delivered me. Jude verse 24. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. In your worst hour, in the worst time that could come for you. The Lord has a vision of grace and mercy and strength and keeping power so that you will make it. Yes. Yes. It was in one of those times when David was being tested that he really did something that I think might have been an act of faith but maybe a declaration of reality. Psalms 121, you know it. I will lift up my eyes into the hills. For whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. He's not some weak little thing. He would not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will never slumber. Hallelujah. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. You are preserved from any and every situation that may come against you because the Lord is on your side. Verse number seven, he says, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. In, in other words, God says, I've set this already. This is not some temporary help for you, but from now on. Tonight, tomorrow, 
throughout your history, throughout your future, the Lord has said, I'm going to be there. And I'm going to be there with more than what you ever thought was available. In your weakest moment, when fear has racked your mind and soul, when you start wringing your hands and you start saying, I don't know how we're going to survive. You need to say, the Lord is my keeper. I shall not be moved. I know that he shall do this. So here's what I have to do. I have to commit my life and my body to him. I have to commit my trust and my faith to the Lord. When fear racks you, and it will come, we're, I do believe we're about to enter a new series. And the series is going to be about when the enemy comes in. And let me just tell you, when the enemy comes in, God's prepared. He already knows what he's going to do. So right now, let's do a baby dedication of ourselves. When I have done baby dedications, the parents bring the child and they say, we give them to you, Pastor. You give them to God. I want you to do that with yourself right now. Do a baby dedication of yourself to God. Say, God, I'm coming and I'm going to lay myself in your hands. I believe that the Lord is able to take you this morning with whatever it is that you're going through and he's able to give you this assurance I am kept by Almighty God. In fact, right now, I feel his hands. I feel the, the covering of his protection. Hallelujah. Let's pray and then we're going to sing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we present ourselves to you. God, there are things that are going on in our bodies and in our lives that we cannot handle. We're facing unimagined, unplanned for attacks, spiritual, physical, financial, emotional. Things are happening in our bodies, in our lives. Lord, we didn't know that we're going to happen, but we trust you. We know, Lord God, that our hope is in the Lord of hosts that you have already prepared for this. You already have in the camp everything that we're going to need. Lord, you're not even going to have to make anything up in order to prepare for what we're about to face. It's already been established. Hallelujah. It's already prepared. But Lord, today we intentionally present ourselves to you just like the psalmist did, just like the prophets of old did, just like the people of Israel did, Jesus, just like you did for the disciples, you presented them to the Father. And Lord, today we are presenting ourselves to you. We need your care. Oh God, I pray right now that you would take us, that you would nurture us, that you would heal us, that you would put a garrison around us, that you would protect us and shield us and heal us and help us, Almighty God. Satan, you are defeated through the power of Almighty God. And we believe, Almighty God, that the victory is already ours through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for this defense to be established around everyone. There are some that have been fearful and, 
even tearful over the things that are happening. Lord God, I pray right now that you would come by your power and that you would strengthen them and encourage them and lift them up. Set their feet on a solid rock, dear God, right now. Establish their way, Lord God, so that whatever direction they may go, you will be with them and help them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.